I think high school movies have the potential to say a lot about society, and this movie, kind of through the, the prism or the gaze of teenage girls, and I just wondered why you think um, that kind of prism is so effective, maybe for this particular story and the themes. Because I think that, I mean, there is such a prevalent aspect of this world that relies on social media, that is grounded in social media, and as, as kind of young women, uh, you know, oppressed, disenfranchised young women. Yeah, I think if you're trying to make a film about rage and survival in 2018, that film is probably going to be about girls, <laughs> and particularly teenage girls, because they're just walking into something that they didn't create. Mm -hmm. So it is a battle mm -hmm. in that sense. And, and one of the items on that long sort of tongue-in-cheek list of um, trigger warnings at the beginning is um, the male gaze. And I just wondered if any of, you's ha any of you had any reservations about doing the film initially, knowing that it was written by a man and obviously the four um, yeah. central female characters. Mm -hmm. um, and, and how open Sam was to you giving some input into your characters as well. He's just an anomaly. Like, mm. we don't know how, where did he, this man Who come from? Exactly. Mm. Like, yeah. But you really have to know Sam and understand, like, what Sam created for us to, to understand that it was the most safe, mm -hmm. non judgmental environment. And that guy is just a fucking G. He's just one so of the girls. girls. Mm -hmm. He is one of the girls. He's one of the girls. <laughs> right after I got the part, he sent me an email, like, the day of saying, I'm here for you, I want you to feel comfortable, I want you to be comfortable with the way you and your character are being represented, I am open to any and every discussion, and if you ever feel like something inappropriate or strange is happening on set, then come and talk to me. Mm -hmm. He just, mm -hmm. yeah. he, he was so generous with yeah. us. I loved seeing um, at Toronto, the, his reaction to that wonderful screening there, and he was kind of in tears on, on stage, wasn't he? Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Amazing um, reaction. I just wondered um, how you describe your own relationships with social media and your digital lives, how you cope with them. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just think there's like such a massive separation between m my life and, I don't know, I'm sort of so, you're, you're so like involved in your own sort of in front of your life that, that I'm not, I don't know, it's like a, it's a separate thing. But obviously, like, I don't know, it, do, it, it does matter somewhat, but then it also doesn't matter at all. It's a, it's, it has lots of different things in it, I don't know. Uh, maybe I haven't quite processed my relationship. <laughs> <laughs> we're, um, we're like dating, I guess, or? <laughs> <laughs> and Sam Levinson said that if you have four young guys talking as these girls do, no one would be shocked by the language or find it taboo, particularly when it comes to um, sex, I guess, mm. in the movie. Do you think there's still kind of inequality there when it comes to the way women are kind of allowed or expected to talk about sex compared with, with Absolutely, guys? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think, I will speak for myself, I'm privileged enough to have grown up in a place where that was extremely, you know, accepted. Like, I, I always grew up with my friends talking like that, and it wasn't necessarily a taboo subject. However, I mean, yeah, maybe it was. I, th I think that there still is definitely an attitude of whim women should, you know, be ladylike and keep their, keep their fantasies and their exploitations to themselves. It's a wild double standard. And it kind of fits into that theme that I think that the film handles um, really well. It was set in, in Salem, and in the late 1600s, there was the Puritanism, Puritanism in society, mm. thanks to the, sort of the British, partly. <laughs> um, thanks, and to, Yeah, man, thanks. and today there's still a kind of a, a righteousness, I, I guess, where um, particularly online, people have very strong opinions, don't they? Can you talk a little bit about that aspect of the movie? Well, that's as American as apple pie. It goes back to Salem, to the colonies. I grew up in Massachusetts. You know, we say we're a blue state and all of that, but it is a Puritan place. That's the roots. And I think that is something that the girls are up against, because it's a very strange time for young women, right? On one hand, we're told the things that we were always told about, you know, cross your legs, be a lady, don't say too much, you know, defer to the man. But also, at the same time, we're being persuaded to be like hashtag empowered feminists. Mm -hmm. But the negative, re repressive messages aren't going away either. Mm. So it's quite confusing. It's really confusing. There's no way to win. There's just simply no way to win in the society that we have taught to grow up. We've been yeah, I think you're just punished. Like e either you're somewhat punished either way. Like you're expected to conform to like gendered stereotypes, and yeah. then 
essentially punished for them. Whatever. You can't win, really. Righteousness is the true enemy of the movie. It doesn't come in the form of a single person or anything like that. It's an attitude that is extremely elevated in an online space. Yeah, and it, it's the root of the horror in the film, that the, how there is nothing scarier than someone or a group of people who are 100% certain in their own righteousness. And angry about it. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!